Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Welcome back to Ask Wrestle Juice. You guys have a bunch of great questions, starting with questions about CM Punk, as reported by the Wrestling Observer and uh, the House of Wrestling uh, website. CM Punk is in talks with WWE to return. Now, I just did a video about this the other day about WWE dropping hints and clues about CM Punk. Now, in that video, I make it clear, I kind of feel like it's much ado about nothing. A lot of you in the comments indicated that you thought that it was a bit of a reach uh, to suggest that some of those things that had been said weren't really clues, they were just coincidences. And I kind of tend to agree with that, but now, with the idea being that they're in talks with CM Punk, it does seem like WWE might be floating out the idea to the fans that this is a possibility and seeing what the reaction would be. I think there's the possibility that WWE might be actually considering it. Obviously, if they're talking with them, then that might be the case. Now, the House of Wrestling website seems to be pretty close with CM Punk in terms of getting information from his side of things. Um, and so I don't know if this is a situation where he's maybe trying to manipulate the narrative a little bit. Larson and I go into that in detail over at the Going In Raw news brief where we talk about the CM Punk news. Um, so be sure to check that out. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I'll sort of believe it once there's more reporting out there that talks have advanced. Um, you know, he doesn't have a ton of leverage right now because WWE's business is really, really good. Things are going really well for WWE now. I went to the SmackDown show this past Friday, uh, a week ago, and man, it was packed. It was a hot crowd. The product's pretty decent right now. So there's not really a lot of incentive for WWE to bend over backwards to get Punk, which would have been the case back when he was doing the backstage stuff. It seems like the, the product at the time was not that great. It was pre-pandemic, of course. Um, but the product really wasn't that good. And so I think a lot of fans would have been receptive to the idea of him coming back. He didn't want to because he felt the WWE was playing games with him. He ended up going to AEW and history was made. Um, so as far as like what's going on now with that, he's in a he has like less leverage now. He's he's got like, you know, because obviously he's not gonna go back to AEW, so it's not like he can be like, well, I can get better money over there. Um, so it just depends on if WWE would want him and what they would do with him. So let's take a look at some of these questions here. Stu Walbaum simply asks, what's my opinion on the news that he's in talks with WWE to return? I feel like it's probably they are in talks if that news is out there, if these reliable uh, outlets uh, are reporting it. I think that that is the case. How deep into talks are they? Uh, how far along are these talks, given that November is coming up in a month? Granted, Survivor Series, I think, is towards the end of November. So there's still some time there for that to come together. Um, once these talks advance a bit more, if that's the case, I will believe it could happen a little bit more. But right now, I suspect, this is simply my opinion, it's probably all very preliminary, but this seems like the kind of thing that CM Punk really wants to have happen. Apparently, he wanted to go to WWE uh, during the interim between Brawl Out and his return to AEW before Collision happened. And even if you guys remember in the lead up to Collision, there was some amount of issues between him and AEW where they had to pull his likeness off of the marketing material for that. So... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll put it this way. Right now, I think anything could happen, ranging from him showing up at Survivor Series in Chicago all the way to him not showing up in, in WWE at all. But if there is reporting from reliable outlets like House of Wrestling, like Wrestling Observer, then uh, I'll, I'll tend to believe it a little bit more. Um, wouldn't shock me to see either one happen. It really wouldn't at this point. I think that WWE is all hands on deck right now trying to get the most value they can for Monday Night Raw, whether it'll be Tuesday Night Raw, Wednesday Night Raw, whatever kind of Raw it's going to be. Uh, I think they're trying to get the most value out of that. After this big merger, they need a big win, um, and, uh, and CM Punk might be the thing. He will be a draw for, at the very least, the short term, and, and there's a lot of matchups there that could work. He was backstage at Raw, what is it, six months ago, a year ago, whatever it was, uh, trying to make amends there. So 
Seemingly, he's interested in going back to WWE. There's a lot they could do with him there. Uh, uh, Andrew Sharp here asks, um, would they be entering dangerous territory putting him in against Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins would be a natural matchup for CM Punk, um, especially given that he ran him down in an interview not that long ago. Um, and see, and Seth Rollins was the guy they brought in for Cody Rhodes as well. That one would be interesting because I'm not sure Seth Rollins would be cool taking three straight losses to CM Punk. I don't know if they do that or not, but clearly that's a WrestleMania level feud right there. Seth Rollins versus CM Punk. I don't know where the fans would land. I don't know what kind of creative they would have with CM Punk. I love this though. Marvell says if Punk went back to WWE, should he pull the real world's championship out of it and dump it in the trash? I wouldn't want to see that, but I think it would be kind of awesome to have a pixelated AEW world championship with the X through it, the way they did with Ric Flair back in the day when he showed up with the NWA WCW championship, just pixelate it while it's on TV. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what he comes back to WWE. You know, things are going really well. Their creative is really good. They're pushing younger people. I don't know what beef he would have with WWE. I don't, I don't know what his approach would be. Would it be like early AEW where he's like, hey, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to work with the stars of today. Uh, would he show up and be like, hey, the changes that I wanted to see 10 years ago have been implemented here in WWE, but uh, I still have a lot left to prove. And they put him on more of a traditional path as opposed to being an anti-authority figure. I kind of feel like that'd be the way to go. There's really no authority figure in WWE that's hated the way Triple H was, even though he is the authority figure now. People seem to like Triple H. So I don't know what tack they would take with him. I imagine it would be kind of a no country for old men situation. What they try to do with Edge, but they would do with CM Punk. I think it'd look a lot like his original run in AEW, just maybe minus the drama. Maybe he would show up and be like, you know what? I'm not really the guy that's going to be here all the time. I don't need to be that guy. I don't need to be the guy that management relies on to run a whole show like he kind of was with Collision. So I can just kind of like with Cohen. Cody came over. He basically was like, I don't really want to be management. It's not my gig. It's not my thing. Just tell me what to do. I'll do it, uh, but make sure I'm treated right. CM Punk, maybe the same thing. I don't really want to be too involved anymore. Just put me out there. I'll have a good time. You guys will have a good time, and I won't try to punk people out backstage. Uh, <laughs> so we'll just move on now. Uh, next question comes to us from Argonaut Arcade. Says, with rampant audio issues and television providers incorrectly listing Dynamite's time slot, do you think this significantly impacted viewership of Adam Copeland's debut episode, or is he not as big of a draw as they had hoped? I thought the episode was fantastic, and this promo is laying the foundation for an excellent story. I agree with a lot of that. I think that his promo was really good. The Christian stuff got people talking. And I think that they probably want to know what's going to happen next. But what's going to happen next is they're going to be moved to Tuesday for a week or two. And NXT is probably going to kick their ass because WWE is loading up NXT with John Cena, Cody Rhodes. I think I saw something today about The Undertaker possibly going to NXT. I don't know if that was a joke or not. It probably was, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, so uh, is the question, if the question is, did the, the 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 viewership info impact his debut? Probably because a lot of people rely on that kind of stuff to uh, to get their information. AEW cannot be too happy with Warner Brothers Discovery right now. Tony Khan has said great things about them. They're a great partner, this, that, the other. But, man, they really done fucked up on the last couple of weeks of AEW. Like, they've had audio issues now with the listing thing. Um, did it impact the ratings? Probably. Can we say how much? Probably not. You would like to think that like they probably would have squeaked out maybe, I don't know, 50,000 more, 100,000 more maybe viewers in the overall viewership if it weren't for these issues. Um, you know, that's just my guess. Uh, but I, I don't think Edge has ever been much of like a big needle mover. It, you know, I, I just don't. Like, he, see, I, he seems like a really swell guy, and I think he's got a really good spot there in AEW. I think they can really rely on him to be kind of, I'm not going to say a depth player, but to be a guy who beefs up the depth of their roster. He's not going to be taking any L's, don't get me wrong. But, yeah, I think they can rely on him to just sort of beef out the roster. Um, and I think that's a good role for him. You know, he provides legitimacy, credibility, um, and maybe some memorable moments. Certainly a memorable story now 
with the Christian thing because Christian's hot in AEW. And if Copeland can do the same, if he can get to the same level of relevancy as Christian, then he's he'll be in a really good spot, and he might be a needle mover at that point. Adam Messenger says, this may be a little early to speculate, but with Tony Storm leveling up into timeless Tony Storm, do you see another female wrestler currently on the roster who could rise to that level and be a competitive foil for her? You know, it all depends on how much time and energy Tony Khan wants to focus on the women's division. Um, and it's seemingly that that's not a lot, unfortunately. But yeah, I, there's all sorts of really talented people on that roster but there's not a lot of spots for opportunity in order to do something like what Tony Storm is doing right now. So, you know, whether it's a Britt Baker or Thunder Rosa when she comes back or any number of the women they have currently in the roster, I really like what they're doing right now with Athena and Ring of Honor. I've actually re up my Honor Club membership just to watch that stuff. Yeah, I think it'd be terrific if, like all the other Ring of Honor titles, they featured in an AEW programming and brought her over to feud with Tony Storm. They could do a lot of really fun stuff with that. Um, John O. Davies says, uh, do you think NXT's use of main roster talent is part of an internal long-term strategy or just a short-term gambit to negatively affect AEW's ratings? Cheers. I think it's part of a, their current plan. I don't know that they are so stuck to long-term plans for strategy with things like NXT and bringing main roster talent over that it's something that they envision doing a year or two years from now because I don't think they plan out that long ahead. They see a strategy that works, they're sticking to it, and if they think that it stops working, they'll pivot to a different strategy. That's how I think they operate because that's sort of been their, uh, uh, that, that's just sort of how things are in wrestling. Like you have to pivot when the tides change. But I think that is part of their current strategy. Um, and I don't just think it's to compete with AEW. I actually think it's less that and more. We're trying to juice our ratings for NXT in order to get a better TV deal and part of that just happens to be be nice to have bragging rights against AEW. Uh, Richard Ives says, what do you think has been the best pay-per-view of 2023 so far? Man, I don't know. Maybe Mania Night 1? Maybe? I don't know. I have to, I got to, like, the year-end stuff is coming up soon. I got to go back and look at the, the a lot of the pay-per-views because... I'll be honest with you, my memory is for shit. Uh, Brooklyn Architect says, do you think a cross-brand faction would work in WWE, have people affiliated with the group in each of the three brands, kind of like an internal bullet club? Yeah, I do. I think Bobby Lashley's faction, if it's spread, that could be awesome. If he goes and he's really choosy about who he takes, but uh, but he plants people in all the different brands, <laughs> that could be awesome. That could be great. I mean, what if Carmelo Hayes, currently uh, a crisis of confidence, turns to Bobby Lashley, says, hey, man, you know, I need some guidance. And Bobby Lashley says, all right, you're my guy in NXT. Get it done. That could be kind of fun. And then they come together for pay-per-views or something. Braden Loader says, do you see Dolph Ziggler thriving in AEW or would it just be more of the same from his WWE run? All respect to Dolph Ziggler. I don't really see him being much of a needle mover in AEW if that's where he lands. Um, you know, I just never – Dolph – Booker T recently said something along the lines of Dolph Ziggler has never reinvented himself, and that's why – he didn't reach a certain, like more of a ceiling in WWE beyond his two short runs as world champion. He had a run as NXT champion. He was a terrific Intercontinental champion for a spell there. But he never reinvented himself. And I think that's one thing that Dolph Ziggler really was missing during his time in WWE. And it could be that he simply doesn't have that type of creativity. He's got plenty of creativity in the ring, but like... He's always just been Dolph Ziggler. He's never really like changed up what he did. So in AEW, a company that really wrestlers who have that type of creativity thrive, I don't know that, that he will have much of a role there that'll be all that interesting. I'll just put it that way. If he goes to New Japan and they sort of tell him to do some cool stuff, I think he'll probably have a better time there, but I don't know if he's going to want to go to Japan. He probably has a shit ton of money. He could probably just try to focus on a stand-up comedy career if he wanted to. Masked Man says, um, since Christian's heel turn AEW, what exactly does Edge have over Christian that they give Edge the Hall of Worthy, Hall of Fame worthy solo career? Similar looks, not too different in terms of wrestling ability and promo wise. I've always felt Christian was always the better talker and has more memorable promos than Edge does. What am I not seeing? as seemingly everyone else does. This is very interesting because I've had this conversation before with Larson, and I honestly think it boils down 
to two things. Edge had size over Christian, not by much, but he had size over Christian. And and that includes height and sort of muscular. Like Edge got a little beefier than Christian did. And number two, I just think Edge has that camera charisma that I think Christian has to a degree. But Edge really does look like a rock star. Like he's got that vibe to him. Sometimes you just can't explain it. He's got that vibe to him. One thing that works so well is Christian with Christian right now as a heel, including the sleeveless turtleneck, is that he looks like he manages a Sears. Nobody likes that guy. You know what I mean? Edge legitimately looks like he could be a rock star, like a big, beefy rock star. He's got that vibe to him. And I don't know if you can really put your finger on it because I agree with, what, with much of what you're saying. Christian, for my money, was always like, naturally funnier than edge he had that thing that he just had better comedic timing than edge but edge had he's got the face he's got the look he's got the vibe hard to put your finger on it but you know when it's there and i think that's why roy costin says looking at the current landscape of wrestling who do you see being a high in high profile matches at wrestlemania in three years i think it's still going to be cody um i think it's still going to be seth I think maybe a guy like Solo Sokoa could break out and be in that role in three years, but it might be longer than that. I think there might be people who could see a meteoric rise like a Carmelo Hayes, maybe even a Trick Williams. Um, so one of those guys is going to have like a breakthrough, even like a Dominic Mysterio. One of them dudes going to have like a breakthrough moment. Damian Priest, I think, is also one that could have sort of a breakout moment, maybe when he cashes in, which could happen as early as Fastlane. I don't know. Uh, Chris Murray says, would you rather run a wrestling company? And then uh, over in the women's side, uh, clearly, it'll be interesting to see if Jay Uso gets there. But like uh, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, they're all th those three. They're going to be. Oh, EO Sky, maybe they're going to be perpetual main event high level wrestlers like Rhea Ripley is going to be for the next 10 years Bianca for the next 10 15 years um and then and then it'll be interesting to see what they do with Jade Cargill I could see Jade in that spot too and they're going to start sort of phasing the four horsewomen into sort of like I don't know away from title or elevating roles for the other you know uh, future stars of the company uh, oh, and Tiffany Stratton, I think, probably might have a, like a breakthrough year in a year or two. Chris Murray says, would you rather run a wrestling company or be in charge of the Star Trek franchise? I'd rather run a wrestling company because I just like to sit back and watch Star Trek. I don't think I'd want to be involved in the creative because the creative right now is so good for Star Trek. Uh, Drago, the Black Rose, says, which AEW wrestlers would you like to see uh, on a limited run comic book about them? Something that gives them a crazy good backstory that can't be shown on television. I'd actually really dig like a Darby Allen comic book. I think his vibe, his look really would lend itself to a cool comic book. Snakeskin says, what's your plans to help Wrestle Juice develop? Here's, here's a two part question uh, about the same kind of general idea, like doing the show. What's your plan to help Wrestle Juice develop its own identity going forward? Have you considered any interviews for the channel? I remember you and Larson doing that in the early days of going in raw. I think you'd be a good interviewer. And then somebody else, uh, Santiago here asks, how does the production of the videos on all your channels work? Like ideas, editing, art choices, etc. Is there a behind the scenes type of team behind it to help? Or is it mostly just you and Larson? If it's just you, how have you managed to make everything work so smoothly and feel different the way you format the style of videos in each channel? Uh, like the jump cut slash randomness of Wrestle Juice and Friendo Club and the long form podcast going in raw that incorporates reviews, sponsors, and questions all together in one. Sorry for the long question. Been enjoying your content since 2016. So I'll try to break this down as, as simply as possible. As far as giving Wrestle Juice an identity of its own going forward. So I guess I'll answer the second part question kind of first. The entire Friendo universe is me and Larson. Um, there are occasions I will outsource some editing to Rob, which you guys know the Rob server because he's amazing, but by and large, it's all just me and Larson. Nobody else writes our stuff. Nobody else does anything for us. Um, on Friendo club wrestling, we split the chores for the editing pretty much down the middle. I do. I do have, he does half, um, the wrestle juice is all me. And her back there. 
Um, for Friendo Club Wrestling, I, I sort of, or we have sort of looked at a lot of different wrestling channels out there and looked at what are things that we can offer up our own take on, what are ideas that we can come up with that we feel would be interesting for that channel. Going in raw kind of runs itself. Like Larson does the 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 producing of like the notes um, uh, for like all the news briefs and stuff like that. I do all the graphics, all the visuals you see is pretty much me. On some of the stuff he edits for Friendo Club, he'll take care of whatever graphics are necessary there. But the look of all the stuff is is basically me because I, I enjoy graphic design. Um, all the thumbnails I do as well. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, Friendo Club Wrestling is, uh, I mean, the idea was, hey, there's an audience out there who probably appreciate to see our short form stuff. Let's take a day out of the week produce as much stuff as we can, and then we edit it sort of through the week um, as we go. Um, and even that is not really as fully formed right now as as I think it will be. It's sort of an evolving thing, coming up with new ideas, et cetera, et cetera. Going in raw is just what it is. It's we review stuff and we talk news in podcast form. Um, again, all the visuals there, I, I just sort of do that stuff myself. Um, as far as WrestleJuice and developing its own identity, WrestleJuice is sort of the thing that I do in my spare time. So I unfortunately can't afford the time to put as much effort into it as I would like to. That's why there's a lot of just me talking to you guys. But I realized I was like, look, you know, we have an audience. There are certain things that I think work best as a solo deal. Me just talking to you guys for a variety of things like with the CM Punk and, and and the clues that are being left, that's the kind of thing I could just sit down, talk a lot, and then edit it and add a bunch of stuff to it. And it just works better that way. Like it doesn't need to be a two-man situation. And Wrestle Juice, I just do when I'm not doing stuff with Larson. Um as far as developing its own identity, I do have an I I do have ideas to do more produced stuff on like not necessarily even a weekly basis, but more like a monthly basis, like good video essays that you can really sort of bite into. I have an idea for what the first one is gonna be where there's less of me sort of just rambling and a lot more like other stuff on the screen, more produced up videos like you typically see on YouTube, closer to what you see with like wrestling with regret, but it's me and not Brian Zane. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, Wrestle Juice, like everything else we do, is just an evolving thing. Like, you know, I, I enjoy doing the tier ranks. I enjoy doing, um, you know, the little tournament bracket things. And then I like just keeping up and offering my own solo take on the news of the day or going to, like, Twitter threads and looking at those and giving offer my opinion of that stuff. Um, but, yeah, I would like to get to a point where I'm doing maybe stuff that's a little bit more produced up, a little bit more in, involved. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's it, The thing is we've been doing this, me and him have been doing this for so long that we realize there is nothing static in the world of digital media. You have to just keep going and, and pivot with the times and pivot with the algorithms and try to offer up our own unique perspective. Nobody's doing anything new. It's all just sort of variations of the same thing, just with different perspectives. And that's what we offer up here in the general Frendo universe. So yeah, hopefully that answered the question. But yeah, in terms of like who's doing it all, you're, it's it's me and it's the other guy and that's it's pretty much it. So yeah, anyways, that's gonna do it for Ask Russell Juice. Thanks for all the questions, I appreciate it. And uh, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, notify bell. We'll see y'all around. <laughs>